everyone. Um, so I was on YouTube and I saw some random church sermon title um, of who knows who, um, and it was called something about fruitful obedience. And I thought, I don't know that that's actually in the Bible. I haven't come across it, but I know the term because it's a churchianity term. Lots of pastors will do sermons on it. Um, which is obviously the case because I found one. And, but, you know, I, I had a look in the Bible and I couldn't find those two words together, uh, even in the same, you know, verse. So, um, you know, you've got two definitions. Let's say the first definition is fruitful obedience is producing fruit, fruit through obedience to law and commandments. And second definition, fruitful obedience is obeying the gospel or believing the gospel, living by faith, walking in the spirit, by setting your mind on the things of the spirit, being led of the spirit, resting in the finished work of Christ and therefore receiving life and peace through the spirit, which is the fruit of the spirit. So which one do you think is correct? And I hope you say number two. Um, if, you're, if you think it's number one, you're probably in the wrong place wrong channel um but you know if you listen to any sermon from any pastor out there in the in church entity i can 99.999 percent guarantee that they will go with the first definition uh that you produce fruit by obeying law and commandments which is not true um, because we know that the law uh, stirs up uh, the flesh, it stirs up sin. Um, Romans 7 clearly teaches us about that. So it can't possibly produce the fruit of the Spirit because the sin and the fruit of the Spirit, uh, you will not find them in the same place. They're just polar opposites. The Spirit does not work through obeying law and commandments, it works by faith, um, setting your mind on things of the Spirit, um, you know, the truth of who you are in Christ, what he has done, who he is, um, and it's got nothing to do with what your behaviour is. Um, so, looking at the Bible, I I just can't find anything that really puts them together. Um, but we can look at some verses. So what do we know about fruit? Um, I found in Galatians 5 that law and fruit of the Spirit are unrelated. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye are led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Um, so spirit and flesh are opposites. And when you're, as Romans 7 teaches, when you're, focused on the law, focused on flesh, um, you know, your own performance and commandments, um, you end up just doing them. Like, the more you try not to, the more likely you are to do what you're trying not to do. You do, you cannot do the things that you would. It's like, what is it? Um, I do that which I do not want to do, you know, that tongue twister those tongue twister verses in Romans 7. Um, and the opposite is, but if you're led of the Spirit, and from Romans 8 we know that being led of the Spirit is setting your mind on the things of the Spirit. What is the Spirit saying? It speaks of the work and person of Jesus Christ, what he accomplished on the cross, who he is, who you are in him, what he has done for you. Um, so when you're focused on that rather than on your own performance and how you measure up to law-keeping, um, 
that is being led of the spirit and therefore you're not under the law because we're dead to the law and the spirit works by faith uh, faith in Christ and his work and therefore um, when when you're walking by faith um, you produce fruit of the spirit because the spirit um, working by faith will produce love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance against such there is no law. So the law has nothing to say against Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is all of those things and because we are in him, baptized into his death, raised to new life in him, we put on him and he is love, joy, peace, you know, he's the spirit. The spirit of Jesus Christ and everything that he is um, is given to us through the spirit and the law cannot say anything against that um, because the law was a shadow of the righteousness of Christ uh, it is not the real thing Christ is the real thing um, the shadow does not have anything to say about Christ himself and it just can't measure up can't say he hasn't done something because he is the definition of righteousness and um, uh, everything that Christ is is perfect <laughs> you know he he is the definition and the law is just a, a vague representation of the things that Christ is so there's nothing that the law can actually say against him and what he is. Um, and through him we have that. So the law has nothing to say to us. And we're dead to it. Um, so law and spirit are unrelated. Sorry. No, no, that's right. But I mean law and fruit of the spirit are unrelated. They, they just do not coexist at all. Um, we can't produce fruit on our own. Only Christ can, and we know this from John 15. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. So apart from Christ, we in our flesh can do nothing. Any obedience that we might manage to conjure up does not produce anything good. It might look outwardly good, but it's not of the Spirit, and therefore it's not fruit of the Spirit. Um, only Christ himself in us, uh, because we are in him, and have put him on, only he produces it through the spirit so us trying to do something of our own on our own and presenting it to God and saying look what I've done that's it's meaningless to him it's that's the flesh it's not the spirit he, if he didn't do it it's worthless so only he can do he can only he can produce fruit real, the real fruit um, and discipline so we've got the Hebrews verses on discipline. Um, discipline produces the peaceable fruit of righteousness, but this there is no actual link here to law obedience here. Um, and this, you know, these verses teach that all children of God receive chastening. This is not only for the disobedient children. <laughs> Um, it's like we all start out, you know, we all believe the gospel when we're saved and then it's a learning process of figuring out that we're not capable of producing anything good on our own apart from Christ. We have to learn that our flesh can do nothing. Um, it only produces evil um, and we we can't manage anything we have to totally rely on god we have to walk in faith 
um, it's it's his way of discipline is his way of bringing us closer to him, trusting in him, relying completely on him, uh, stripping away our self righteousness and replacing it with his righteousness and our, our full full reliance on him, knowing that in in our flesh we are nothing, but in him we have the spirit and and he is our life and he's the one who reduces fruit and the good works um and that is that is what discipline does so you know like you you're going along in life you you've got a good job you've you bought a house um you've you've done a few you know you've made it made something of yourself of your life and you think, yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And um, you sort of, you're a Christian, but you sort of just like, yeah, God's there if I need him, but I got this, you know, I'm doing pretty well. Um, you're ready for some discipline <laughs> in in terms of maybe something happens that God allows something to happen that kind of messes that up for you. And then all of a sudden, you desperately need him and life isn't so good anymore and and you can't rely on yourself and you realize that you're incapable of dealing with this situation and without him it's you know you're, you're done um it can manifest in so many different ways but you know life life trials are designed or used by God to bring us closer to him, to rely on him more. And that is discipline. It's not because you're a bad child. Um, it's if, if you're going to say you're a bad child, it's, you, you're, it's because you haven't put enough faith in him. I mean, you. I don't want to say not enough faith. That's a, That can be used as a, um, a something to beat people with, but you know, like, he wants us to live by faith and we, that's the biggest thing we struggle with. We're not doing it enough. We're not trusting him enough. We think we've got it. We, we're trying to do everything in our own strength. That is, that is the disobedience. It's, it's not believing that he has done everything and he's going to be everything for us. Um, it's, it's, it's trusting ourselves. Um, you know, a bit of self righteousness, a bit of um, just trying to do everything on our own apart from Christ. Whereas He's trying to let us know that we are in Him and He has taken care of everything. And we can totally relax and just let Him take care of things for us. And, you know, these days I find that. The more precarious my situation is, the more the more comfortable I am because I know that he has to come through for me. Like if if I hold on too tight to things and think that I've got it all sorted, the less secure I feel because it's still down to me. And um, you know, I've just got a new job where there's like much less job security um, than I've had previously like they could just fire me for no reason now whereas before they couldn't and it just um, it's scary but at the same time it's like well I know that if I got fired I'd probably lose my house and so I have to just totally trust God to hold it together like it's up to him now um, because I can't do it and he's going to have to help me um, to stay, I don't know, to be a good enough employee that they won't just fire me. I mean, it could just be financial reasons why they might decide to do that, not because I'm a bad employee, but um, who knows what will happen, you know. But it's just things like that. It's like the more, the less control I have over my life, I think 
the more the more secure I feel because I know that he therefore has to take care of it. Um, and he says he will. Um, so yeah. So anyway, there's chasing him business. Um, that's what this one is. It's it's taking us through situations where we learn more about who he is, uh, the nature of God, that he is he's done everything for us and he is there for us and he he wants to be the one to take the, the burden, take the load off us. Um, we don't have to hold it up ourselves. Um, that is the purpose of it. So, and yeah, of course, it's not fun going through that, but then you finally learn the lesson. It's like, oh, wow, he really does have it covered. Like, <laughs> um, So anyway, I'll read it. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chasten, uh, chastisement, where, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have we have had our fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and and ga uh, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much? Um, and shall we? Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastisement for the present seemeth joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Um... And, you know, the way we're partakers of his holiness uh, is through the Spirit. And, you know, as you're walking by faith, that's how the Spirit works, by faith. And it, it brings forth fruit of the Spirit, the peaceful fruit of righteousness. So that's the whole purpose of, of discipline. It's not about getting you to be more obedient, except... Uh, if you want to call it obedience, it's what is it obedience to? It's obedience to the gospel. He's told us to live by faith. Um, the just shall live by faith. We believe the gospel. The gospel tells us everything that Christ did, that he has paid it all, and we live by faith in that gospel. And when we're living by faith, the the spirit works Spirit works by faith, making us partakers of his holiness, and it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. So, yeah, a no link to law, obedience, um, when it comes to the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Um, so, those are some verses about fruit. And I did find you might try to draw the two together, obedience and fruitfulness, um, in Colossians 1 and Romans 6. Um, but the only way you can interpret them is obedience to the gospel, not obedience to law. So let's have a look. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So we've got being fruitful in every good work. Um, and we know from John 15 that without him you can do nothing. So the good works that you do, um, the fruitful good works, have to be Christ himself doing it through you by the Spirit, by faith because the Spirit works by faith. And one thing we're told, you know, we're supposed to renew our minds, um, grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and here it's, it, he's, Paul is praying that they would be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So they're growing in knowledge. It's it's setting their minds on the things of the Spirit. What, what has Christ done? Who is he? Um, who are we in him? Um, his person and his work, all of that. They are to grow in knowledge of that, in wisdom and spiritual understanding. And 
if that happens, then the result is that they would walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing because they're walking in the Spirit. Um, it's not because they're obeying law and commandments that they're pleasing to the Lord. It's because they're walking by faith and being filled with that knowledge which is set, you know setting their minds on the things of the spirit and walking by faith which is what he wants us to do that is uh, the obedience and th and therefore because the spirit is working when we are doing good works they are fruitful good works because they're of the spirit it's Christ himself working in and through us through the spirit and you know we keep increasing in the knowledge of god so Again, the only obedience I can see there is obedience to um, the gospel by faith, um, knowing Christ's person and his work. You know, he is the gospel. His work is the gospel. Um, so knowing that, knowing all the things, you know, the, the uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 talks about according to the scriptures um, so there's much about Jesus Christ that we can learn through the scriptures there's so many pictures figures and types um, from the Old Testament that Paul um, has highlighted you know in Galatians um, when he talks about Hagar and and Jer Jerusalem Hagar and Sarah the New Jerusalem versus um, Sinai you know, law and law and grace. Um, I don't know, just things like that. You know, like so many pictures that point to Jesus Christ and His grace. Um, so you you can learn all about Christ through the entire Bible. Christ is on every page. It's all pointing to Him and His work, the gospel. So then, Romans six. Um, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Obedience unto righteousness. Is that obedience to commandments? Because you cannot become righteous through obedience to the law. Otherwise, why did Christ die? He would... He, he died in vain if we could become righteous um, through obedience to the law, which is, uh, I think, Romans 4, some early Romans chapter anyway. Um, so obedience under righteousness can only be belief in the gospel, which we are made righteous through believing the gospel, Christ imputes his righteousness to us when we believe um but thank be thank oh, sorry but god be thanked that ye were that you were the servant of sin but ye have but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you so there there's um the obedience to the gospel um that form of doctrine which was delivered to you is the gospel so yeah, we've obeyed the gospel. Um, being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity. Even so, now yield your members servants to righteousness in, unto holiness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So, um, let's see. So we're made free from sin through our death with Christ. 
by believing the gospel and that therefore we're um, not in the flesh anymore we we still have the flesh but we're not in the flesh um, we're in the spirit now as Romans 8 talks about um, and you know before before we were saved we could do nothing but sin like that was that was it we were in the flesh flesh sins flesh can do no good um, so we were servants of sin and free from righteousness but now um, we have the spirit and so therefore by faith by believing the gospel uh, we are in the spirit and our, our flesh is dead crucified and we're dead to sin and the law um, and as saved believers we can we can either yield our members to uh, to sin or we can yield our members to the spirit um, and basically that's like walking in the flesh versus walking in the spirit as Romans 8 talks about uh, and you know it's it's what what is your mind doing that's how you yield uh, it's by faith and you're setting your mind on either yourself and your performance your flesh um, trying to improve the flesh or you're setting your mind on the things of the spirit which is Christ and what he has done not what you have done but what he has done and by faith presenting yourself to God um, and that he would work through you and so anything that you do is is him through you um, and that you know the again it's this, the fruit of righteousness that through the spirit unto holiness and he is holiness it's not us trying to be good so that we can consider, call ourselves holy and righteous it's his imputed holiness and righteous righteousness uh, that we have by faith through the spirit um, so yeah any fruit unto holiness is through obedience to the gospel and you know walking by faith setting our minds on the things of the spirit um, so you know that's as close as you can get to putting obedience and fruitfulness together and it's clearly not talking about uh, obedience to commandments, especially when you know that in this is Romans 6. So in Romans 7, Paul talks about how trying to obey the law results in sin and the flesh rising up. And then Romans 8 tells you, so what you need to do is walk in the spirit, which is setting your mind on the things of the spirit, which is... Christ's person and his work, the gospel. Um, that Christ died, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Everything that Christ did according to the scriptures and who he is and who you are in him, your identity, truths. So, um, yeah, there's no such thing as fruitful obedience in the context of obeying law and commandments. So next time you hear that, just tune out. <laughs> All right. Hope that blesses you. Bye.